Welcome back to That's Life with John Carver. This show I'm taping today is uh, several months overdue. Uh, I'm taping this in May of 2017, and I'm going to try to get through it. Um, for those who have followed our story and our family, our youngest daughter, Juliana, passed away in October of 2016. And I want to do my best to share just a little piece of her journey that um, she's been through uh, for quite a number of years. Um, we adopted Juliana from Belarus, Russia, when she was about 20 months old. And for the first several years after we adopted her, she was vibrant. Uh, when we first saw a photograph of her, her eyes were, were crossed like our youngest son's eyes were crossed. So we had her eyes and our son's eyes uh, operated on and straightened the eyes. And Juliana was uh, very outgoing, gregarious, uh, positive, happy, always smiling. Then in 2007, early uh, in the year, she came downstairs and told her mom uh, that she had a bump under her arm. So we took her to the doctor and had some scans done. And we found out she had cancer. And just a couple years before that, my wife's father died of lung cancer. And uh, obviously that was still very fresh. So I remember when Juliana's uh, doctor called, I just held my wife in the foyer of our house and we both just sobbed because at the time Julie was five years old. So the thought of losing your child, or not losing, your child being taken away because of cancer uh, was and is a horrible thing to think about. So she went through, the, the, uh, the disease was in her right arm. Uh, it's called uh, aviolar rhabdomyosarcoma. I never even heard of that term before Juliana got sick. So the cancer was in, in her right arm. She went through weeks of radiation and chemo, lost all her hair. The uh, lost a lot of weight. The radiation burns on her back from um, trying to get rid of whatever else was may have been in there. It was in her lymph nodes, and it was pretty bad. So she went through treatment and uh, and made it. Uh, she was cancer free. So a couple few years went by, and she's getting her hair back. It was really really full. And then we noticed a, a lump in her right thigh, and our, our worst fears came true, that the cancer was back for the second time. And this is, sorry, this is March 2011, when the cancer came back. So we're thinking, you know, how can this be, you know? Once is bad enough, but twice is, is, is horrible. So she went through a lot of treatment, lost most of her hair. She uh, kept the hair on, on her back, you know, toward the back of her head, but lost the hair um, on top of her head. Excuse me. I was afraid this was going to happen. Um, so she always positive. Of course, she was sick, throwing up, vomiting. It was just bad, bad, both times. So she went through it. And we were at, this is like early, uh, this is like June, late May, early June 2012. So we were at a funeral for my wife's uncle. So we were in the service. We walked outside to the graveyard and we're standing outside in the graveyard. And Julia and I looked up at Tammy, my wife, and said, I think I want to pass out. And knowing what she's been through before, we knew that the cancer was back again. This time it was compressing on a major artery in her hips, near her hip and, and around the aorta, feeding her heart, or I don't know biology, but the main artery from the heart. So we were told to rush her right into the hospital and we found out that 
only a matter of time later that the, the disease would have squeezed uh, the artery down here to the point where she could never walk again. It would cut, cut off the blood and or it would have burst the aorta and she would have bled out in a horrible, horrible way. So we uh, were told that that was pretty much it. She wasn't going to make it. So this was June of 2012. Yeah. So, <laughs> hi, my name is Joanna Cogwin. I've been through some stuff and I don't really know some people out there, but you may have it. So if you're having a hard time, you can get through it. Because if I can get through it, then you can. And you know you can. So she went through treatment. And um, again, we were told she wasn't going to survive because it was really, really bad. So we're like, how, how can this be? How can your daughter pass away, your child, you know? So. I thought, you know, how, what can we do to, to make her time here easier? So I asked her one day, I said, if there were three things you'd like to have, what would it be? And she said, not to have cancer. And I said, we're working on that. And she said, a billion dollars. Oh, sorry. I hate crying in public. It's just so de demeaning. But I miss her so bad. So she said, not to have cancer. She said, uh, a billion dollars, with, with, a, with a B, by the way. And then a, seconds go by, and then she said, a puppy. So we went and got her a puppy, which we, we still have. The dog's name is Maddie. And Maddie was, uh, was Juliana's buddy. I mean, they were so close. In fact, I saw some tweets that Julie did. I'm sorry, excuse me. That she called Maddie her baby. So, again, this is June 2012. So one day I was out working, and, and now we're talking July, late July, I can't remember the exact date. But her main oncologist at Sinai Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland, called, his name's uh, Jason Fixler. He called, he said, uh, he says, John, we just did scans, as you know, a few days, a couple of days before. We can't find any evidence of disease. Wait a minute, we're talking from June to July 2012. It went from bad that she's not gonna make it to um, no evidence of disease. So we were, the doctor and I and my wife and Julie are, were just flabbergasted how quickly that the treatment you know, had helped Julie. So she made it, you know, she, she would still get scans all through this time from 07 through, you know, 2012, scans every several months to make sure that she's still, you know, free of cancer. So I noticed in early 2014 that her right eye started to droop. I take lots of photographs and video of the kids over the years, but I noticed that that right eye orbit, the, the, the eyelid started to droop. I'm thinking, something's really wrong here. So I told my wife, and I contacted one of her doctors. I says, we need to look at this. So now we're talking March of 2014. And um, we found out that the cancer was back. This time, it was in her, um, her right, right uh, eye orbit. So it was just above the eyeball in her right eye, which was pushing her, the muscles in her right eye to, to droop. So she went through treatment. They, they would put a mask on her for the, for the treatment. She had to lay really still in the machine that would radiate her eye. They, they did surgery to, to remove a good part of it, but still they had to do other treatment to, um, to get as much of it out as possible. So this is March 2014. So she went through a number of weeks of that, and it seemed like she was, again, clear. So now she's had it, what, one, two, three, four times uh, since she was five years old. So um, 
July 1st, we were invited to Washington, D.C. Um, by the Children's Cancer Foundation. And, you know, I, for those who don't know, I post a lot of pictures and on her Facebook page, Angels for Ju Ju Juliana, thanks to a, a very dear friend named Amy who started that page, actually. And then I have a U YouTube channel that several million people have watched our story. So, um, Chef Robert Irvine uh, was supposed to be in Washington that day to sign books and he works with a, co a company called Giant Food. Uh, he has products and food items that he markets through Giant Food and he was going to be in Washington and the Children's Cancer Foundation was going to be there so we were invited to go have lunch with Chef Robert Irvine. So it was a really good time because Juliana wants to be a chef when she grows up. And um, Robert Irvine uh, had lunch with us. Uh, there was maybe, I don't know, 10 people in the room. It was, it was really cool. And Chef said that he was gonna stay in touch with Juliana. And you know, he's a celebrity, a millionaire, I thought. At the time, I thought, you know, he was a kind man and says these things to probably a lot of people. So I thought we'd never hear from him again. So we found out on July 12th of 2015 that Juliana had cancer again. It was in her chest. It was, it was pretty bad. So Robert would call her and text her and FaceTime with her several times over the years just to encourage her, just to give her a little, little push to, to keep going. And um, he stayed in touch right to the very end, and we'll get to that. So again, we're talking March 2014. So she went through a bunch of treatment. And then, uh, I'm sorry, this was July 2015, excuse me. So she went through a bunch of treatment, and then in uh, December 2015, the same exact year, well, let me, let me about back up. We found out in July of 2015 that there was a possibility. I'm sorry, I don't know if I can edit this, blow my nose out. But we were told that Juliana may qualify for a bone marrow transplant. Um, and you heard in the beginning of the show that we adopted Juliana from Minsk, Belarus. So the likelihood of my wife and I being able to donate and or it working is pretty slim. But we also adopted Juliana's bio sister, uh, Svetlana, which we named uh, Christina Svetlana, and we had her tested and she wasn't a match. So I had to find Juliana and Christina's birth mother somewhere, probably still in Belarus. So I sent some emails out to, some, to the embassies here in the United States and in Belarus, and within a very short amount of time, like a few weeks, we got a response back that um, the birth mother, Irina, was willing to fly to the United States to be a donor for Juliana. I thought, finally, maybe, maybe we can have a cure. So this is now, let's say, the fall of of 2015. So December 30th, 2015, we found out that the cancer was back again for the sixth time. And this time it was, um, it was on her back and her rib area around back and she was in so much pain. I mean, so much pain. So that delayed um, the transplant, even getting started, we had to coordinate her the birth mother flying in from overseas. So we finally uh, arranged for the birth mother to fly in in February of 2016, and um, uh, we found out just days before that the birth mother arena was to, supposed to fly in that Juliana had cancer again. This is now February 2016. So now it's the seventh time she's had cancer. It keeps coming back again and again and again. And again, it was, 
you know, in the same general area as the last time. So I remember Arena was due to fly in just a few days later. And I remember Juliana sitting on her mother's lap and just crying and, and saying something like we were, uh, she said something like frustrated. We were so close because we really thought that this transplant was going to work. So the hospital agreed to, uh, this is now we were transferred to Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland, because Sinai Hospital doesn't do transplants. So we were transferred to Hopkins and the hospital agreed to freeze the bone marrow until Juliana was uh, hopefully cured again in order to be able to do the uh, transplant. So they froze the marrow and Juliana went through treatment and then in late May 2016, now the birth mother flew in, she did, she, she donated, went through the procedure, stayed in, in our home for uh, about a week, uh, she stayed with another individual, very kind. I'm sorry, excuse me, it's so rude. She uh, stayed with another individual who flew in from out of state to help translate for us. And um, so then Arena stayed with, uh, with us for about a week. So they got a chance to, to connect, but Juliana was still very sick, very sick. So Juliana went through the transplant. I'm sorry, excuse me. So Juliana went through the transplant starting in late May 2016. It was hell. It was, it was brutal. She swelled all up. It was, it was really bad. But we had hopes that it was going to save her. Juliana had hopes that it was going to save her, you know. She's like, if we can get through this hard place, she could live a long life. She could potentially grow up to be a, a chef that she wanted to be, you know, have our own family, get married. So then she was in, in, the, in the, the clinic in early October 2016 every day for checkups and things. The whole week of the first week of October. And um, she, she developed fluid. Let me back up. A week prior to that, we found out that the cancer was back for the eighth time. This is September 2016. It was the, the, uh, the cancer was around the pleura of her, her right lung. And uh, again, she was in, in, in the clinic, in the hospital every day as outpatient treatment the first week of October. So this fluid, they had to put a drain in her chest to drain the fluid off her lung every day. Tammy, my wife, would do that at home. And then Friday, Juliana was getting weaker and weaker and weaker. This is uh, October 7th of last year, 2016. And um, she, could, she was hard, having a hard time breathing. Plus, my wife took off a bunch of fluid, like that much fluid, off her right lung. So we um, rushed her back to Johns Hopkins. And they put her in inten intensive care because she couldn't breathe. There was an infection. We, we found out there was an infection in her Hickman line, which is the tube that she was getting medicine for for months in her Hickman line. There was an infection in there and um, caused her lungs to shut down. So they put her in ICU and she was in there for two weeks, two weeks to the day. But that first day that they put her in, which was October 7th, 2016, we were all gathered up there and the doctor came in and said that they had to intubate her. They had to put a, put a breathing tube down her throat. If not, she wasn't going to make it through the night. And when they put the breathing tube in, her heart was probably going to stop. We had no, you know, no warning of this at all. We just, she was in, in the clinic for the whole week. You know, they didn't catch it or they didn't see it. So we had to sign papers. We had to say, to say our goodbyes to her. And they intimated her. They put the breathing tube in and her heart stopped. 
And then they did CPR and and brought her back. But she was semi-unconscious with a breathing tube in. So my wife and I, especially the wife, was there every day, every night. I came in there during the days. I'd stay in a, believe in tomorrow house that week or two weeks, uh, about a block or two from the hospital. So I could be as close as I could. Some dear friends, some dear friends, the Cohen family and the Bromley family uh, helped us with the other kids. While Tammy and I stayed close to Juliana and um, Juliana started to get better. You know, the, the game plan was to start new treatment for, for the disease on October 26th. So again, just for the timeline, she was put into ICU on October um, 7th of last year, 2016, in ICU through the 21st of October. And uh, she was getting better every day. The doctors were pleased. Uh, they were very happy that she was progressing and due to come back um, on the 26th of October for more treatment for the disease. So she was released from the hospital. Let me back up. Uh, right around October 20th, um, let's say the 19th, the governor's wife of Maryland, um, Yumi Hogan, came up for the second time in ICU when Julie was there. The first time she was intubated, so Juliana didn't even know she was there. So Mrs. Hogan came back up and uh, invested quite a bit of time with Julie, talked to her, they were conversational. And then that night they gave her some, the hospital gave her some uh, heavy duty pain medics, medication, and then Julie was never the same since. She couldn't hold a conversation. She doze off mid-sentence, but she was still, really excited to go home that prior day before the medicine. They were, she was very excited to go home to see her Maddie. In fact, there's a video clip I shared of her brushing her hair because she wanted to go home. It looked good for her dog, Maddie. So this is October 21st and they released her from the hospital saying that that she was stable enough to go home. And then um, we, I carried her in. She couldn't even walk because they, they, they were telling us the pain meds were make, was, was making her groggy and she couldn't walk. So uh, we, we were told to, some weeks before to have hospice to help us around the house, not, or with Julie with the medicine, not because she was going to die anytime soon. There was no talk at all about Juliana dying anytime soon because they got the approval for the insurance for the new treatment plan to start on October 26th. So over the, the weekend, Juliana started to fail. And uh, nobody showed up to help us. Nobody. How can your 14-year-old little girl die, you know? When nobody warned us, nobody told us that she was going to die anytime soon. I mean, granted, she had the disease again, but she had it seven times prior, you know? So... Um, we woke up when uh, um, October 24th, and I looked over and she was gone. A little 14-year-old little girl was gone. And there's nothing that can prepare you to look over in your own bedroom and see that your baby girl is gone. There's so much more to share, not enough time to share it, but there's thousands of kids that are dying from cancer. I don't. We were told by several well-known doctors that the cancer did not kill Juliana. I'll leave it at that. They said there's no way that cancer killed her that fast. That's another story. But just know that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of kids who have passed away from cancer and not too many people seem to care. So, sorry I got emotional. It's still such a painful situation. We miss her so bad. I mean, not to have her around the house. It's just torture. You know, I have to go visit her in a graveyard. It's horrible. But we're one of thousands of families who've lost children. So just remember those people in your life and please help me kind of share Juliana's story, you know, that she's just one of thousands of kids who suffer from cancer, you know, who want to live, who want to grow up, who 
What did I have a dream? So, appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll talk again, okay? Thanks. Hi, I'm Joanna Coyle, and I just wanted to thank all of you out there for praying for me and my family, because I've been going through so much in the past nine years, and we just got a chance for a while ago, and we just couldn't have made it this far without you. So your prayers really help and mean a lot. So thank you so much for praying for me. It means a lot.